Hey everybody, it's the Grumpy Meeple, and I am back again with another unboxing from the Chronicles of Drunagor Age of Darkness Kickstarter. This is for the Spoils of War box, which is the stretch goal, the stretch goal box for the game. So let's get into it. There's so much stuff for this game that that came with that Kickstarter that <clears throat> even just <laughs> unboxing and organizing it all is like it's a bit of a it's a bit of an effort. It's a lot of content. All right, really cool art on the front of the box. Really cool art in general, across, kind of across the board for this game. Very, very impressed with the art so far. So first of all, we've got, looks like just kind of um, a list of the contents. You've got deluxe dungeon roll boards, deluxe class ability boards, 12 more hero boards for the unlock heroes, 23 deluxe hero boards, this is for, um, these are the original boards, and we'll talk about that in here in a bit. Monster cards, initiative cards, skill cards, class ability cards, and then a bunch of miniatures. Um, and then it goes into how the deluxe player boards work. Um, but I think, like I said, we'll talk about that. Okay, so right off the bat, we have the deluxe player boards. Sweet. Let's crack them open. So when the campaign first launched, this is, and if you go back and look at the campaign, even now, um, this is what you're going to see on the kind of materials for the campaign in the, you know, like on the main page is these large hero boards. Um, and the idea is that you kind of put them down like this. And then um, you've got your health tracker. And then you've got, um, let me zoom in here. You've got skills that are locked on the board initially. And these are the skills that you have to level up to be able to access. And so that's why these white cubes are in the core box, because they originally were planning on giving you this, um, this um, player board. And the idea is you go through and you, you cover up all of the skills that are, that are locked from the get-go. And then as you unlock them, you remove the cube. But, you know, I don't know if they thought that that was maybe just a little finicky and just added to the setup, you know, to have to kind of go through and and um, put those cubes out at the beginning of every game, basically. But um, for whatever reason, they decided to, to go the other direction with the new player boards, which I like. I haven't, I haven't obviously, you know, gotten to play the game yet, but... Um, artistically, I do like the other boards at least as much as these. Um, that said, these are very cool. They're nice quality. Um, they're double-sided. And you have all of your, all of your characters. Um, these are cool boards. I mean, in any other game, this would be... <clears throat> I'd be pretty happy to get a board like this. You know, I don't know that if I had backed the campaign when it was <clears throat> on Kickstarter, I don't know that I would have um, balked at, you know, the boards as they are. But I'm happy to have more choice is always better. So I'm happy to have the option to use... Um, the new boards or the old boards. So 
All right, and then the next thing we have, we're getting right into it with the miniatures. Let's take a look here. Set that aside, another nice game tray, more non kind of locking, um, non kind of, you know, with those push fit kind of trays where it snaps your guys in, those can be problematic. And let's get some of these guys out and take a look. Um, just making sure that we're kind of in focus here. Let me zoom in again. Extreme zoom. Yeah. So, again, really pretty, pretty great miniatures in this game. With you know, sculpted bases, tons of very defined detail. This weapon is really cool. I guess it's like a scythe slash, almost like a walking stick. It's pretty cool. It looks like these are all the baddies. Here you've got this disgusting demon. <clears throat> this tongue sticking out giant big old hands another arrow I love the like fletched arrows that are embedded in some of these guys these huge awesome looking I don't even know what that is like a double headed scythe kind of a dealio <clears throat> Excuse me. And lots of scarring on his stomach and stuff. That's really cool. Next up, <clears throat> we've got Mr. Multiblades. And again, you know, just like really great detail. The hands are all, he's got all his fingers and everything. He's got his muscles. How many goddamn arms does this guy have? Six? Because <laughs> he's like, it's like you see the ones that are popping up, and then, oh yeah, he's, I got one here too, bro. Uh, so, not lacking for weaponry, that's for damn sure. And, you know, again, just great, crisp detail. None of that kind of muddy detail that. <clears throat> I, at least, as a kind of middling, if not just outright kind of terrible painter, um, really struggle when the detail is not there on the miniature for me. Um, if I have to try and pick it out, you know, or use, some, you know, some kind of techniques to, to make it to freehand detail onto the miniature, that's just basically not going to happen. Um, <clears throat> but stuff like this... This huge, well-defined, you see it's got, you know, it's got definition, um, like wrap around his arm, super easy to paint. <clears throat> He's got his two heads, kind of got, kind of got one, oh man, and look at his giant, ridiculous tongue lolling out of his mouth, and then he's got a second head there, like a little baby head. <laughs> Kind of looks like, um, if you've seen Army of Darkness, kind of looks like Ash, like when he's splitting in half. <laughs> uh, all sorts of muscle definition and just all sorts of disgusting stuff going on the back end of this guy. And, and some dope chainmail kind of armor. And, and I don't even know what is going on there, but I know that it looks very cool. <clears throat> And then you get whatever the hell this thing is. Some kind of evil, twisted, hideous, hideous abomination. He's got all sorts of scragglies and claw, scythe shaped claws. There are a lot of scythes in this game. Which is cool. You don't see enough scythes. You also don't get to use the word scythe enough in everyday modern, modern life. Not enough for my taste anyways. So, oh, and then the cards, of course. 
We shan't forget the cards. So, bust these open. Okay, so you've got enemy cards and looks like um, these are um, initiative cards. This game has an initiative track system that looks at least at first glance kind of similar to Blackstone Fortress. Um, one nice thing about the initiative cards is they have the starting cubes on them and you'll see that you know they're different for each character. I really am excited to play this game. And then it looks like you get a bunch of new classes. Um, sorceress, let's put these down. In terms of character classes, you get Sorcerer, the Shadow Knight, the Monk. I always love playing as or at least having the option to play as like monk type characters in these kinds of games. I think it's just kind of a vestige of my love for Diablo 3. Uh, druids, I almost never play as a druid. Bards, I like the idea at least. Whenever I play these games, I usually kind of playing to the like bigger, like armored frontline fighter type you know, like a paladin or a warrior from World of Warcraft. This, I always play as DPS or melee characters in World of Warcraft or other RPGs like that. I don't know why, it just kind of speaks to me. Um, and then you've got, um, you know, level up cards for all your various characters and such. So lots of cool stuff on here. Lots and lots of stuff in here. This is great. And then it looks like some pets, maybe? Familiars? Yeah. Some new familiars. Very cool. This game does not lack for content. That's for sure. And then again, you've got your game tray. A little bit of um, extra storage here. Maybe used by other components in the box. I'm not sure yet, but if you watched my organization guide, then you know that, um, you know, there's... There's not room for everything in the core box, even for everything that came in the core box. And so, um, oh, and I didn't even notice this, but the, the name of the game is on these. I can't quite see that. Chronicles of Trinagur. These are really cool <clears throat> game tree things. Oh, all right, here we go. So right off the bat, some of my favorite stuff, the bling, the dungeon bling. The treasure chests, really cool, really highly detailed treasure chests. Looks like you get six of them. And then what you're going to have here is your heroes, I believe. So, I believe this is Arcanos the Mage. You know, like, look at that. Like, his pouch and his belt and stuff is all super detailed. His robes have lots of texture on them. Cool, badass, and also mostly straight staff. Really no complaints with these miniatures. These are some of the better miniatures that I've ever... And, and I don't know what it is, but I don't know if it's just the color of the plastic or what, but if like I compare them to like the Zombicide miniatures, which are great miniatures, um, but unprimed and kind of out of the box they don't pop with as much detail as these do um and i'm not sure what to attribute that to this guy some kind of paladin or something he's got a book and again it's got <laughs> i love this it's got writing in the book little runic symbols that is badass because even I, like this is exactly what I'm talking about. The kind of thing where it usually wouldn't ha have any detail sculpted into it. And, you know, a really good painter or really even just a decent painter would just hand 
scrawl some notes into there, but I just, I, it would just be a mess if I tried to do it. I know it would, um, but I can paint that. Love that. He's got a sweet ass horn. And then, I don't know what this was. It's like a hammer, it's like a giant hammer. That is, that is really cool. <clears throat> this is, I think this is Pietro, 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 Pietro the Cleric. Why am I having trouble pronouncing that word? Pietro. Again, incredible. I wish I had um, some other miniatures out from like Alter Quest or something. We could compare them. Alter Quest is a game that I got in a couple months ago and I honestly haven't touched since I got it. Um, I was deep into printing stuff for the Brimstone hex crawl system when, when the Alter Quest showed up. Um, here's some kind of crazy lizard man. The other thing too is just the 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 sculpts, the the um, poses and stuff are really cool. Um, that's another thing that you don't always see. Um, he's got look at look at the detail on the book on his kind of kind of thing. This was a problem that I had with um, the Zombicide Undead or Alive campaign, which I was insanely excited for because, like I said, Shadows of Brimstone is one of my all-time favorite games, and there aren't very many Western-themed games out there, especially not, you know, like dungeon crawls like that. Um, and so I was super pumped when I heard about Undead or Alive, and I came away from the campaign ultimately a little bit disappointed. Um, it felt like it was just kind of like a crappy sequel to the 2.0 campaign which was much more interesting and better with way better unlocks and much more content and one of the things that annoyed me about it was that all the hero miniatures which they just kept throwing at you which were virtually identical they were all just like a dude standing with his guns either held up in the air or pointed in front of him um and and they just kept throwing these heroes at you. And it's like, having played those games, the heroes add the least amount of gameplay to those systems. This is another really cool miniature. I think that this is the assassin with her, with her dope ass horns. And again, nice, nice detail on those. I really don't like, who the hell are these guys? See, these guys have some, they got some balls to come out of nowhere with this game, with these, this kind of, miniature quality and and um it's just like almost like brazen you know like i said i've said in previous videos they i don't mean to keep referring to them as like a brand new developer they have other games that they've kickstarted but they they had they don't have anything else on this scale um and much less with the miniatures and stuff which are not you know even the big the big boys are like simon they they don't always they're not batting a thousand on that stuff. And these guys are out of the gate with some really great miniatures. Like, see, this is a really cool pose for your monk. Um, or at least I'm assuming that this is the monk. <laughs> and again, you got the, <laughs> the meeple on the base. This is your kind of berserker dwarf, I think. Like the details on his arm, like the musculature and stuff is great. Huge axe, like buried into the base. Awesome. This is like a halfling riding on a wolf. I think very cool got his spear the wolf looks really cool when you have this kind of textured minis like this too they're they're just they are easier to paint especially um fur and stuff like that you can you can really suck at it and still do a good job where you just basically slap a base coat on and then dry brush over it with something lighter and it'll look pretty decent Here's another halfling. He's got kind of his multiple, multiple blades and a 
what the hell is that thing on his back? It's not like an axe or something. I don't know what this is. I can't quite see it. It's cool though, no matter whatever it is. Very cool. This looks like a familiar or a, a um, companion pet for the wolf. I always love having these instead of the tokens. I hate having tokens for shit like this. It just, you know, it just like ruins the immersion. Really cool. Where were we? This guy's got, is it a boomerang? I don't know that I've ever played a dungeon crawler. He's right here, he's on the box too. It is a boomerang. I don't know that I've ever played a dungeon crawler that came with a guy with a boomerang, which is hilarious because the original video game dungeon crawler, The Legend of Zelda, not the original, don't come at me with posts about how fucking esoteric P <laughs> Atari 2600 game X111 whatever was before The Legend of Zelda, but the my original dungeon crawl game uh, the Legend of Zelda, you know, pretty heavily featured the boomerang and um, made such an impression on me that I named my son after the main character, actually. Very cool. But you never see boomerangs in these games, especially not on a character. There might be one that has, like, a, a boomerang in the inventory, you know, but I'll be interested interested to see how that plays. Here's another really cool sculpt. See how he's not just in this static pose where he's just like standing straight up. He's like bent over and he's kind of on one, one knee getting ready to pounce. He's got his dagger. Oh, this must be the bard. He's got the harp, which is looking really awesome on his back. Lots of detail, the face, the facial detail too. Like, look at that. This guy's better looking than I am. Somebody said uh, that if I want to, somebody said in the comments, if you want to get popular, you got to get on camera, which I intend to do. Um, and I don't really have any fear of it um, in my work. I'm on Zoom all day, every day. So, but um, <laughs> I'd almost rather have this guy get on. He's better looking than I am. I should just have him. I should just have, have him be my stand in. <laughs> it's kind of wacky humor you're only going to get here, guys. Here's another guy in another very dynamic pose with another very cool weapon, which again is like fully intact. And another goddamn scythe. Man, this game is all about the scythes. Too bad the word, the, the name scythe was already taken. They could have named this game scythe. <laughs> Looks like we got another familiar here. Looks like a hawk or an eagle. Eee! Eagle! Any Scrubs fans out there? And then we got a pretty dope ass bear climbing up onto a rock. Cool. Nice and big. No disappointment in the miniatures in this game, either in the core box or the stretch goals so far and wait until you see the dragon i haven't opened it yet but i've seen it on other people's videos and man that dragon is insane <laughs> okay let's maybe we'll pop back out a little bit and then so remaining what we have is the standard player boards for all the unlocked characters um or the the new standard i guess and I really don't know. These they're both they're both very kind of well done, attractive player boards with all the the detail that you would need on them. Um, I really like them both. I don't know which which ones I'll end up using. I do know that for these boards, they have a set of game trays hero trays which i am desperately trying to get um because that was the one thing i couldn't get from the kickstarter um i've even reached out to cgs and said hey i've got a, a youtube channel where i've got 44 whole subscribers and i really want to review these things all i want to do is buy them from you 
somehow, even just one, so that I can just review it at least and cover it on the channel and let you guys know if it's valuable or not. I'm not looking for freebies. I just want to get my hands on one of these things so that I can try them out and see if they're as cool as I think they're going to be and share that information with you. Um, haven't heard anything back yet, surprisingly, or not. <laughs> these are um, the roll cards, dungeon roll cards for the larger player boards. So the idea is that if you're, you know, I suppose you could probably still use them with this as well if you wanted to. Um, but you have that same problem where it has, um, you know, like the locked skills on it. But the original idea was that you would lay them out like this. And so you'd have your, I'm sorry, I know that there's some glare there. I may need to just kind of reposition a little bit. Um, you would have the roll board right next to the kind of big board. The player board. All very cool. I haven't been disappointed with a single component in terms of the quality in this entire set, which is very unusual. I have a couple of, you know, minor quibbles with the storage and how that works. Um... But the component quality, the boards, the cards, the cardboard, no problems. Even these cubes, which when I saw it on the Kickstarter, I thought that they were just going to be kind of like crappy little wooden cubes, you know, which is fine. I mean, some of the best games ever made use those. Um, uh, Lords of Waterdeep uses them. Um, but they're not. They're actually this nice plastic cube, and I don't know why, but... I prefer it. They're like glossy and kind of premium looking. These are very interesting. These are the hero class boards from the um, from the original game, like the level up system. So let's bust this open and take a look here. And maybe we'll even zoom back in. What do you think? Okay, let's pop in there. Boop. Guys, I'm getting so good. I'm able to zoom in without <laughs> stopping the video. Incredible. Um, yeah, so the idea here is that it's like a spear grid, like in um, Final Fantasy X or like, a, like, a, like the talent tree in something like Diablo or... World of Warcraft, where you have these different paths, and as you level up, you are allocating um, skill points, essentially, to work your way down the path, and some of the paths are going to be kind of have a split in them, um, and some of them are going to be kind of progressive, where you have to take all three skills to get the most powerful one. Um, and these look like they're actually the dual class boards. Oh, I see. So the warrior board is on the back. And the dual class warrior cleric board is on the front. And so if we go even one level deeper here, you can see here. So if you go down the blade master tree, you're going to start out with precision, which is going to give you I think it's an extra attack plus one to hit, maybe. I still need to kind of read up on the rulebook. And then from there, you have two options. You can go for weapon expertise, which lets you crit on 18, 18 plus, um, or you can go for master stroke. Whenever you score a crit, you heal six. That sounds really powerful. I always tend to go for those kinds of skills that are self-healing and allow you to kind of keep yourself alive. Um, and you can see there are just like tons, so many different character classes. This, oh, <laughs> okay, this is really interesting. So 
they actually have both, I don't even know this, they have both sides of the coin, basically. So you can be a warrior cleric or a cleric warrior, and you can see it's a completely different set of abilities. Um, man, somebody spent some time sitting around dreaming up abilities for this game. Really cool. Can't wait to get into it. One of those games that, you know, with the number of these types of games that I tend to buy, I could, um, I'll never even see one-tenth of the content in this game unless I get really, really lucky or I really knuckle down on playing this stuff every night. Um, once my kids are a little bit older and aren't sucking away quite so much of my kind of life force, maybe I'll be able to stay up past 9 p.m. again and I can start getting some games in, but um, man, I, w I hope I get to crank through this game because it is really cool and and I can't wait to start playing it. I think I'm going to start my gameplay series today, actually. Um, but for now, that's all I have. That's the unboxing of the Stretch Goals box, um, the Spoils of War for Chronicles of Drunagor Age of Darkness. Thanks for watching, and the next time I see you, we will be unboxing the Dragon Box, and the Dragon is incredible. So look forward to that. Talk to you later.